Hi, welcome to another episode in this series of uh, alignment tutorials that I've been conducting for the past few months. And today we're going to be discussing how to prioritize and deal with dependencies. So imagine the situation which I believe uh, could be fairly common with yourselves at the moment. We're still in the midst of this coronavirus uh, pandemic, so we're all working from home. And I presume that you've got back to back team meetings at the moment where you're having to discuss the priority of projects, allocate resources, understand the impact of changes to plan and figure out the dependencies of what to do about a specific aspect of your work. Right. So I would surmise actually at a higher level, you're getting alignment with your colleagues, your peers, uh, your line manager and other stakeholders in order to get stuff done. Right now, um, in order to help you get stuff done, in order to, for you to help prioritize more effectively, um, understand the dependencies, I'm going to be introducing a different perspective on the topic I've already discussed, which is the strategy on the page. <clears throat> And this time we're going to be looking at the strategy on the page, not at a personal level, which I discussed in an episode about um, finding time to be more strategic, which was a personal strategy on the page. This time we're, we're looking at a, a level higher. Um, we're then going to have a, a look at the um, uh, application from a line management perspective um, across um, the uh, boundaries, so to speak, into different departments. And then we're, we're going to drill down into a product management example. And then I'll finish off with a, a conclusion as well. <clears throat> so um, strategy on the page is really useful for identifying duplication of effort, maybe competing requirements, uh, project aims, which seem to sort of either pull the business apart or uh, conflicts over shared resources. And quite often we'll have the, uh, the executives making uh, seemingly uh, gut feel decisions on the, uh, what next to do, which kind of upsets the apple cart with all of the planned work that you've already put in place. So strategy on the page actually provides you with the material and the view um, and the uh, ability to communicate to different people the impact of um, their proposed changes. So strategy on the page is a simple document. It is what it says on the can, right? And it effectively states what a department or a team are going to be doing differently. So we're here today. We uh, imagine in a 18 months time, we're going to be over there. We're going to be in a different state. We're going to be working differently. And a strategy on the page is our plan on how to get from here to there. <coughs> so. Um, the point is, the uh, strategy is quite a, a nebulous concept. Um, it's obfuscated in lots of uh, technical uh, business-like language, uh, and it makes it difficult to understand. So um, if a strategy is going to be effective, it needs to be clearly communicated. And I am a strong believer in this, and this is why I teach it on the courses I give. <coughs> So um, it's a simple framework and the biggest benefit of this is actually when you start to uh, look across the rest of the business who are also using the same tool because then you can do a like for like comparison, compare outcomes, objectives uh, and also the activities that contribute to those outcomes. <clears throat> so the simple framework, we have the principles, engagement, ways of working mission and vision, which is effectively your purpose, and the strategic themes, which can be um, otherwise um, described as an outcome. And then the key measures of performance, which demonstrate you've been successful in achieving that outcome. And then below that are the activities, the capabilities, the projects, the initiatives, um, the um, epics on a roadmap um, that contribute to those specific outcomes. And you can slice this in many different ways and uh, the interpretation of it, it can become a team soap where each of the outcomes can be, say, allocated to, say, one person um, 
or you can have a group of people who contribute to an outcome and you can allocate against that. <coughs> now, um, what I'm going to provide you with is a template which you can download from the link in the uh, description and um, this is something that can help you get started um, with, with your team, yourself, um, to, to demonstrate the application of it in your work environment. Here's an example I prepared earlier and uh, it's a, effectively a synthesis of some of my experiences having worked for a variety of different organisations. Now then, um, uh, as a consequence, um, well, typically when I've been uh, w working with clients, uh, say a head of department, um, I, I can start from scratch and after a two hour meeting, have the first draft of uh, a strategy on the page. And um, after a series of iterations, uh, reflecting back uh, the contents I've put on that to say the, the director, um, I can come up with something meaningful that reflects what their view of how they're going to achieve their goals over the, the next short term horizon. So um, in this specific in incident, um, uh, we, we have the mission and vision, uh, strategic themes and the, these activities. And as I've mentioned previously, it's, it's important to be able to demonstrate how these outcomes are, are going to be fulfilled it's because it's the activities which cause the work, right? And we need to be able to have a, an appreciation for what kind of uh, resources we need, what skills we need, where the work is going to be taking place and how things are going to be achieved. Now, this is not to say that this is the director, say, prescribing upon his team, they will do precisely these things, but it can be a debate. It can be um, to solicit uh, from the team and say, well, how do you think we should achieve these outcomes? And at that point, we can have a rough draft. We can come up with a uh, roadmap, more or less, of the things that need to be done. Now, um, when it comes to comparing um, these strategy on the pages, um, it's really useful to understand the impact. And this is where the uh, thinking time comes in. So let's say, for example, I'm working with the uh, marketing director and uh, they are wanting to improve the, the effectiveness of their emailing campaigns, right? Don't know exactly what that means, but say as a technologist working with the marketing department, this is a clue for me to sort of say, well, you know, there could be an impact on what services that the technology department provide. Does our existing solution come up to scratch? Are there alternatives? What could uh, go in its place and what features and functions are required in order to make their uh, marketing, mass mailing more effective. You get the idea. And this is where the comparison between what, say, the technology department's doing and what marketing is doing and what the dependency between the two are, uh, that thinking time is where the insight comes from. And if you didn't have those kind of documents uh, in a, expressed in a clear way, then it makes it much more difficult to have that kind of conversation. And you could end up, say, endless back-to-back -back team meetings uh, going over the same topics round and round in circles, right? So uh, uh, here's an illustration uh, to make the point uh, slightly differently. So imagine a car company, a well-known car company, and they thought that um, in order to get competitive advantage, they need to uh, provide uh, more safety features for their customers. And uh, one of the outcomes that they're trying to achieve is that their customers feel safer with their cars. Now, how are they going to achieve that? Well, it's by including additional technology, which reduces the workload of the driver so that uh, the technology can predict a collision scenario and apply the brakes faster um, than the driver otherwise would have been able to do. So, uh, preventative collision uh, avoidance type thing. Now, how do you do that? Um, so. They've decided that the engineers have decided that it's radar uh, plus uh, some clever programming uh, to be able to predict these scenarios and apply the brakes, right? <clears throat> so I've used the word here AI, effectively uh, understanding a lot of uh, uh, publicly available scenarios, um, developing the machine learning, the heuristics um, to um, be able to predict with a high degree of certainty these collision scenarios and 
their need to the uh, IT department is that these uh, applications, resource intensive, can be spun up quickly. So they use a cloud service and they can deploy it um, as a software, as a service, machine learning to predict these collision scenarios. So you get the idea. So there's a dependency, but all are working together towards the same outcome of making the cars safer. And it's only when you start to put the jigsaw pieces uh, together across the organization there you can see the interdependencies, um, the shared alignment in terms of outcomes that achieve the corporate level goals, which in this case is sell more cars through developing radar technology. All right, let's move quickly into a practical example of how we can use strategy on the page to help gain alignment across different functions. So we spoke about these different jigsaw pieces and it's really assembling those different jigsaw pieces into one consistent picture that everybody can see and start to appreciate uh, some of the complexities involved and try to avoid the duplication of effort, scope, increase, um, improve prioritization and um, uh, remove these uh, conflicting requirements. <clears throat> so imagine we have an organization, a global organization, uh, and quite often um, these individual departments will uh, uh, keep their cards close to their chest or not share how they're going to fulfill the overall uh, company objectives. And here we have the, the typical strategy on a page framework, uh, principles, mission and vision, and then outcomes, and then uh, the activities um, that would be outlined. And quite often in a fairly standard organization, some of the imperatives would be to grow sales and also improve operational efficiency. All right, pretty standard, standard stuff. Then it'll be upon the individual departments to demonstrate how um, they are fulfilling um, those strategic themes. Uh, you know, um, obviously some departments may well be more tuned to some outcomes than others. So for example, with sales, inevitably they're gonna be helping the organization grow sales and finance. Likewise, they'll probably spend quite often uh, their efforts in improving operational efficiency. <clears throat> Enterprise IT um, in the middle can obviously help the organization do both. Um, so let's just take um, uh, some uh, examples, some real world scenarios and see how that plays out. So imagine you're the sales director and you're thinking, how can I help the organization grow um, its revenue? Now, it may well be that they have a particular problem. Uh, so one scenario would be um, that their sales force um, are complaining bitterly about the fact that they are receiving their bonuses late or they're not necessarily reflecting the work that they have done in gaining new sales contracts for the particular products and services they sell. And on, upon deeper analysis, they find, they find out that, um, in fact, because this global company has six different CRM systems, trying to consolidate this information uh, and bring some timely reports means that um, the um, uh, sales reps don't get their uh, bonuses on time because of the amount of time it takes to get that information together. Now, um, so the sales directs will be thinking to themselves, well, um, in order for me to incentivize the sales force and uh, resolve this problem, I need to improve the accuracy and timeliness of reporting. Now then, Let's move on to the enterprise IT uh, function. Perhaps the director there is thinking, well, you know, how do uh, I help grow sales and improve operational efficiency? Perhaps um, now that IT is not necessarily seen just as a uh, cost efficiency and productivity uh, tool, um, it is also now something which can uh, promote sales revenue by offering digital products and services. Perhaps um, it sees itself as enabling digital transformation. And um, in response to the particular concerns that the organization have, perhaps the directors come up with a couple of uh, activities, which is to consolidate ERP and CRM solutions and um, deliver a one consistent platform um, which uses microservices so that they can be easily created 
So as and when new digital products and services come on board, these microservices in the background will help fulfill uh, that service. <clears throat> and last but not least, the finance department will be thinking to themselves, well, how can I improve operational efficiency? Well, perhaps in my department, I have uh, many people who are trying to produce these uh, monthly reports and satisfy the legal compliance, the gap accounting standards. Um, and in fact, I think um, there's an opportunity to reduce that headcount and also uh, increase the accuracy of this. Because at the moment, despite having so many different systems, we still end up uh, using a lot of Excel spreadsheets and that's error prone and um, inefficient. So I want to uh, automate and consolidate the data aggregation across all of these different uh, systems across the globe. <clears throat> so quite often what happens in an organization is that they don't have visibility across the whole uh, domain and they'll think in isolation and think okay well how can I improve the say the accuracy and timeliness of reporting well I know I've got six CRP uh, sorry CRM uh, solutions um, you know what I'm just going to move over to a well-known software as a service vendor CRM and I'm going to ask enterprise uh, IT to, to help me deliver that so um, there's a dependency upon enterprise IT to enable certain aspects close down certain systems and open gateways uh, to uh, cloud services so here we go so, You know what, the enterprise IT uh, person may well be thinking to themselves, that actually fulfills my objectives and um, helps me uh, achieve uh, the uh, initiatives there. So I don't see necessarily a conflict in and of it by itself. <clears throat> so, um, however, if you were to have a separate conversation with the finance, finance may be looking at a broader piece. It's not just CRM, but potentially manufacturing, or operations, um, you know, so it, it'll have a, a broader piece, a piece but a different perspective. Um, and in order to fulfill these activities, it has a dependency upon enterprise IT um, to do this technology uh, service. And it may be thinking to itself, well, actually what I need is a business intelligence data warehouse. So you may be thinking to yourself, now that I've got a view of the different jigsaw pieces and how they uh, fit together, we're starting to see some issues around duplication of effort, scope, prioritization and conflicting requirements. If there are dependencies upon enabling organizations to deliver this, maybe there's only one set of resources who may be called upon to deliver both um, solutions which one goes first. It may well be that if, say for example, there's no further discussion about one or the other, perhaps um, missing the opportunity to say, well actually there could be one system which delivers both things, can we not deliver that first and then add the functionality necessary to satisfy other departments, so on and so forth, um, and then as a consequence that platform would go first before, say, sales. In, in addition, looking at these requirements separately, they may be conflicting, it may be pulling the organization apart. So if they were to, say, deliver a uh, BI warehouse which didn't integrate with, say, the existing systems or uh, the uh, cloud service provider, it's a lost cause. It actually creates more inefficiency as a consequence. So you can see how not just looking at the outcomes at the different levels and how the outcomes are aligned, but the different approaches employed can start to highlight um, some issues uh, which I've just mentioned here. So here's a, uh, a simple example of how strategy on a page can uh, help uh, team managers, department level um, conversations, um, gain consensus, um, call to account, raise awareness with different people on what they're trying to achieve and how.
Okay, let's change gears slightly and look at the scenario where the same company, um, Widgets Inc., um, are now thinking about implementing this uh, platform of microservices. Now, um, just to a brief reminder, uh, the whole idea of Widget Inc. is to grow sales and improve operational efficiency. And after a bit of arbitrage, compromise and better understanding, um, in order to enable digital transformation, the best way to do it is to deliver this platform of microservices. So it's a big investment, a big departure from the way things used to be done. It's not just a, a, a consolidation of CRM packages. It's not just a, a BI um, a data warehouse. <clears throat> now, let's just uh, go through this um, uh, little chart here. So we now have a microservices team who have their principles, mission and vision. And um, they've broken down their team uh, structural set of deliverables into four major outcomes, which is manage customers, manage sales, manage reps, as in the sales reps, and uh, manage reports. So just to clarify here, manage sales is the actual transactions and the, uh, the, the, the revenue that the, the company earns. So you'll, you'll see that these features actually uh, resemble quite a lot the CRM solution and indeed also benefit the, the finance function who have to do their reporting as well. So there's obviously a win-win there, right? Now, what's really important from a, a product management perspective is the definition of done. And we're going to say that done is when the team microservices have delivered version one, release one of all of the epics and the features that pertain to these uh, four different silos. And uh, for clarification, um, they've decided that they need four product managers to, to manage each of these silos so that they can best um, negotiate, corral and um, manage the artifacts associated with each of those um, major uh, capabilities. <clears throat> so uh, the idea is these product managers will help deliver each of these capabilities that will enable the digital transformation that will grow sales and improve operational efficiency. Now uh, these blue lines here are um, basically uh, epics um, and these have been prioritized into a specific order relating to the impact they're going to have on growing sales and improving operational efficiency. And um, the idea is that this effectively becomes their roadmap and we're seeing each of these roadmaps put alongside to get a holistic picture of what the content of work is for this particular team over the long term. And what I've put here is Q2 plus whereas for the uh, near-term backlog, i.e. the first quarter, um, has been decided by the teams deciding what can be realistically achieved uh, for the next three months. And that's done through this idea of having a program increment. And with a microservices type platform, inevitably there are going to be things like a, a web front end, a mobile app, uh, APIs that need to access the, the data and the data management, and then the DevOps, which provides the underpinning infrastructure behind the scenes. <clears throat> so, great. Okay, so what, John? What happens when Sunbright Spark comes up with a new feature request? Where does that sit in our content of work, which, you know, has been worked through, and we've got a rough idea of long term our roadmap over the next, say, 18 months or so is going to be delivered. They have compelling evidence that offering a campaign discount to customers is actually going to help grow sales. Now, the functionality required across these four silos hasn't been understood in terms of the impact. <clears throat> so effectively, if you think about it, you, you could argue that offering a campaign discount 
only pertains to managing the sales. So it's incumbent upon this particular product manager to perhaps squeeze this uh, um, feature in onto the roadmap and then prioritize it based on the relative impact and sorry the relative contribution it will make to growing sales and improving operational efficiency. However perhaps after a bit of analysis uh, the, the, this product manager here may argue well, actually no 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 this, this storyboard actually encompasses all four of these uh, different capabilities and in fact we are going to have to include features for this um, campaign discount for managing customers, managing the sales revenue, managing the sales representatives and managing reports. So this is actually a much bigger piece of work than what was initially envisioned. So that means there's going to be some jockeying for position relative to all these different uh, epics in, in the um, uh, roadmap. So there needs to be some collaboration between all four of the product managers to assess how we can fit in this new feature request. And it may well be, given the impact that this um, request has, um, in terms of being able to demonstrably give uh, the growth in sales that's been perceived, is so massive relative to all the other features that are being proposed that it's been put on the back burner here, right? <clears throat> so effectively, what we've done based on the contribution towards an outcome, growing sales, and the level of impact it has on the overall work and the implications on the infrastructure and everything else, that it's been decided to, to be put uh, lower down. So in effect, what we've discussed here is scope. Where does it fit? Is it just for product manager here or for all four? Or is it a question of priority as well? And if so, does it actually fit within the first release or do we put it on the back burner uh, waiting for further analysis and availability on the, the, the much longer time frame beyond say 18 months. <clears throat> so a quick example from a product management perspective delivering a specific aspect of digital transformation this time microservices and a structure where we not just look at one specific roadmap in isolation, but when we compare them side by side against the other roadmaps to understand the net impact and contribution of a feature request that may come through. So, so there we go. So in conclusion, um, my recommendation is to implement strategy on a page. If you have a holistic view across the teams with a standard common language of expressing alignment, outcomes, activities that people can see clearly and how the interdependencies between the different department strategies align towards the organizational goals, how the activities contribute towards the outcome, then it's much easier to prioritize, say, sudden changes when somebody comes in from the outside and says I want to do this now because then we can have a conversation about well what's the contribution to the outcomes is it in scope does it fit actually on the page uh, <laughs> literally and if that is going to go on the page under which outcome is it going to go and as a consequence of putting it in that column what else is going to stop in order for us to achieve those aims and indeed are there any other dependencies that when we include it in this particular column that uh, other teams may have a impact as a consequence? So a debate, a much more insightful debate can occur. So strategy um, builds on relationships and value, uh, effectively three core competencies that uh, form part of our uh, online training program. And effectively, this is a synthesis of my experience, leveraging best practice, but applied in a really useful, practical way so that you can feel confident about applying these techniques in your world of work. And that's the whole purpose, my remit, is to make you more successful. And I believe I've managed to do that through the manner in which I've put these courses together. Now, 
these courses, um, because they're new, you're effectively helping us beta test um, the, the final outcome. Uh, but that is going to end uh, at the end of July. Uh, we'll finish completing value management. That'll be going live. And as a consequence, if you were to subscribe after July, the amount of uh, you'd have to pay would be a lot higher. So approximately a thousand pounds instead of 500 pounds. So whilst we're still beta testing value management, we're still offering this fantastic free for one offer by relationship, get value and strategy for free. And as a consequence of doing the exams, you too can have a SDBP certificate, which stands for Strategic Digital Business Partner. Best bit about these courses are effectively the exams. And this is the feedback from the users who've been participating in this because the exams are not to test your knowledge, but actually augment the learning experience so that you are now the protagonist in a story where you're having to make decisions on what the best action would be. So it's contextual, it's specific. The story is about a digital transformation in the bank, which we uh, can all recognize and empathize with. So you immediately engage with the material. So applying the tools that you learn on the course to a specific case study, but in a story-based format, uh, gives a feedback. It's just light work. And that is exactly the point I want to make. So thank you for listening. Do sign up for the uh, uh, special offer and look forward to uh, engaging with you on the forums um, and in the exercises. Thank you.